Hey guys, when setting up the KVM, it's natural to assume the KVM is causing issues, but most of the time, the problems actually arise from the setup, connections, or choosing the wrong components. Today, we're gonna cover several of our common troubleshooting techniques to help identify the issues and how to fix them. Here's a quick outline of the topics that we're gonna cover today. We've broken down each section so you can skip ahead, but watch the critical tips before doing so. All right, let's dive in. I know everyone has heard this over and over again, but it's so true. The first step in troubleshooting is always to reboot everything. To do this, you turn the KVM off, you unplug it to drain the board, reboot your computers, and then plug the KVM back in and power it up. During this initial setup process, unplugging and replugging the cables can cause signal errors and rebooting is gonna clear all of this out. The second critical tip is that for dual monitors, you must make three physical connections from each computer. Two connections are gonna be for video, and one connection is gonna be for data. If you have a laptop, you're probably gonna need adapters or a docking station to achieve this, and I'd say 95% of the time, video issues are just from using the wrong video adapter. So please, use our list of tested and approved adapters and reach out if you need help. The final tip is how you should connect the monitors to the KVM. Make sure to connect display one output of the KVM to the left monitor and display two output of the KVM to the right monitor. If you're looking at the KVM from the back, like this, Display 1 gets its video signal from the right video input, and then of course, Display 2 is gonna get its signal from the left video input. Now you can easily trace back issues, so if you have a problem with PC1 and your right monitor is blank, you can trace back and troubleshoot input B for PC1. Diving a little deeper into video issues, we break them down into two sections, going into the KVM and coming out of the KVM. But before we get into that, let's confirm that Windows is set up for dual monitors by pressing Windows P. A menu is gonna pop up, and then you wanna select Extend. Mac OS doesn't have this feature, so if you're on Mac OS, don't worry about that. Now, it's pretty rare to have video issues going from the KVM to the monitors, but it's really easy to test. Once everything is connected, switch between PC1 and PC2. As long as you get both monitors to work for at least one of those computers, you know the KVM output is good. Now, if you only have one monitor working for PC1 and one monitor working for PC2, you can use the KVM's Mode 2 Split Desktop feature to check the outputs. To do this, use the hotkey command scroll lock, scroll lock 3. Then you can alternate the monitors by pressing scroll lock, scroll lock 4. During these tests, both monitors should work at least once, and then you can go ahead and move on to the video inputs. Identifying connection issues from the computers to the KVM is very easy if you set up the KVM like we advised in the critical tips section. If the left monitor isn't working, it's input A. If the right monitor isn't working, it's input B. Most of the time, the problem is one of these four issues. A video adapter is not converting in the correct from in two directions. A USB-C port does not have DisplayPort Alt Mode or Thunderbolt. You're trying to use a video port on a motherboard when you have a graphics card installed or you happen to have an incompatible docking station, but this one is pretty rare. Number one is easily solved by using our list of tested and approved adapters. Most video adapters are not bi-directional and our page has from and two columns to help avoid choosing the wrong adapter. Remember, the video signal is gonna flow from the computers to the KVM, and if you need an adapter for your monitor, the signal is gonna flow from the KVM to the monitor's input. We always recommend using the least number of adapters as possible, so use HDMI to HDMI cables or DisplayPort to DisplayPort cables whenever you can. Number two is a little bit tricky. You'll have to check the spec sheet for your laptop to confirm if the USB-C port has DisplayPort Alt Mode or Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt usually has a lightning bolt logo near the port, or you can go ahead and test it in real life by taking a USB-C adapter and go directly from the laptop right to the monitor. If you get an image, then the computer has the capabilities that you need. If it doesn't, then a docking station or USB 3.0 adapter is probably gonna be the best solution for you. Number three can happen when you set up a desktop computer. If you have a graphics card installed, it will most always disable your motherboard's video ports. You will have to connect the video connections from the graphics card directly to the KVM and avoid your motherboard's onboard graphics. Number four is not very common, but in some rare instances, we've seen issues with older HP and Lenovo Slim docking stations. If this happens with you, reach out to support and they'll help you solve this issue. If you're getting an image, but it's blinking or flashing or wrong colors, try using different cables that you know work. So for an example, 
If PC1 works fine, but PC2 isn't working right, keep the cables that are plugged into the computer that's not working, but unplug them from the KVM's PC2 input and plug them into the KVM's PC1 input. Basically, you're just swapping PC2 into PC1. Now, if the problem persists and it follows to PC1, which used to work fine, then it's likely an issue with the cables or the adapters that you're using. And sometimes just unplugging and replugging these cables is going to fix the issue, but if it's persistent, try using different cables or adapters. Now, these dual monitor KVMs are capable of HDMI 2.0 refresh rates, but the speeds might be limited by other components in the connection string. Adapters are notorious for using cheap chipsets that reduce bandwidth. Also, some monitors, they like to advertise higher refresh rates, but then they limit the speeds for the HDMI ports to save cost. Review your monitor's manual to confirm that the HDMI is rated for the speeds that you expect. These dual monitor KVMs have pass-through modes, so there are far fewer incompatible keyboards than in prior generations. Check out this hotkey video if you want to make sure that you have pass-through mode turned on. Now, if you want to use hotkeys, make sure that you plug your keyboard into one of the dedicated mouse and keyboard ports. These ports have emulation programming, which allow the KVM to recognize the hotkey commands. Hotkey triggers can be assigned to either scroll lock or right control, so if scroll lock isn't working, try using the right control key instead. If the right control key isn't working and your keyboard does not have a scroll lock key, press and hold the yellow push button for about 15 seconds until the KVM beeps. This will change the hotkey trigger between scroll lock and right control. If the keyboard or mouse isn't working at all, first, make sure that you made the proper USB connection from each computer to the KVM. This is quite often overlooked during the setup process. If that connection has been made, then you can test your keyboard by plugging it directly into the KVM's USB 2.0 port. This is a common workaround if a keyboard or mouse wasn't developed with standard HID programming. The only downside to the USB 2.0 port is that it's not going to recognize hotkey commands, so you'll have to use the push button on the front or the remote control to switch inputs. Remember, you can always add a powered USB hub if you need to connect more devices. Repeating characters is another common issue. This is caused by a conflict with a mouse and keyboard software such as Logitech Options or Corsair IQ. If this is happening to you, you'll need to uninstall the software. Type in Remove Programs, scroll through the applications until you see the software that you want to remove, and if you absolutely need to use this software, you can go ahead and just use the USB 2.0 port for your mouse and keyboard as a workaround. Quite often, customers will note that their wireless mouse or keyboard is jumpy or erratic. This is almost always due to RF interference and is a common problem in non-KVM environments as well. You can test this quickly by using the mouse up close to the receiver, and if it works normally, then we recommend just picking up this cheap little USB extender to get the receiver out from behind the KVM and closer to your mouse and keyboard. As we mentioned in prior videos, the KVM does not have internal Bluetooth. Because of this, Bluetooth devices like Apple's Magic Mouse and Keyboard do not work with the KVM. But if you still want to try using other Bluetooth devices, you will just need a Bluetooth receiver and pair your devices to that receiver. Then plug the receiver into the USB 2.0 port but we found that very few devices are capable of pairing to the receiver, so it's best just to pair directly to the computers and switch manually if you want to use them with both of your computers. It's important to understand that the KVM receives audio over the HDMI connections, and then the KVM replicates the audio to the monitor and to the analog audio output. If you're using external speakers, you're going to have to turn the volume on your monitor down. Most audio issues are caused by the operating system not selecting the correct audio output that you want. When the audio isn't selected automatically, you simply click on the audio settings on your operating system, then select the option that looks like your monitors. Sometimes it's not clear, so we recommend just going through all the audio output options and find out which one is right for your setup. Some customers have found that using a USB adapter is a better and more reliable way for the KVM to receive audio. This is especially true if you're using VGA or DVI since they don't carry audio signals. If you have persistent audio problems, we recommend this little audio adapter that's around $10 on Amazon. It plugs into the KVM's USB 2.0 port or hub, and then you plug your analog speakers into the adapter. Now, the KVM can receive audio over the USB, and then you simply choose USB audio on your operating system. All right, that's it for today's video. If you still need help, you can always open up a ticket at buytesmart.com. Thanks and have a great day.